Crypto friends, it's the Market Sniper, it's the Crypto Sniper coming at you. Yep, last time we spoke, we warned of uh, Tether Dominance technical pattern, and we brought the specter of a demand-destroying event, a slowing in the overall economy that could have a dollar strength uh, aspect to it and could lean on crypto. Where are we today? Why is crypto still limping along? Um, what is the story behind that? We aim to answer those questions right here, right now in the video with you. So without further ado, let's pivot to the Bitcoin chart. But before I do that, a small reminder of the last video where we highlighted that this particular uh, inverted head and shoulder that was extending we suggested could get an extension to its shoulder come around and still break up to the upside this was tether dominance this means people selling cryptos to get into the safety of a stable coin uh, particularly the the most dominant one of uh, tether we also highlighted a little further on this that there is a bigger chart structure that has a lot of confluence areas we'll re revisit all these areas but this would point to quite a substantial re-rating in crypto to take us anywhere to the 11 percent and the 12 and a half to the even the 12.8 percent in crypto would actually see quite a substantial fall in bitcoin and very definitely in the alts as well so what gives it's time to go check in with those same charts again all right let's get on with it So here we are back on the tether uh, dominant side of the charts and I want to I want to highlight this I'm going to let go of the Fibonacci just so that it can show up a little better and get a little bit more room but we are looking at the tether dominance inverted head and shoulders last time I spoke to you despite warning of this you were in an actual down leg that's actually positive for Bitcoin Bitcoin had just had a little pop out uh, to the upside and I was warning that this Tether dominance thing hasn't necessarily entirely gone away uh, and that it's been very well supported at current levels and that there's money on the sidelines for one or other reason uh, and that any break above its neckline, note this neckline here, we did break over here but we reversed and it was round about during that reversal on that red day I was talking to you which was a little bit more bullish for crypto it has to be said than it is now because what's happened we have broken again so what is the structure and that is the threat that we're talking about well it is the again it's no change to the original pattern but you've got to recognize that when you get patterns you do get complexity within them so this kind of had a sort of a two lumps to it and then it had its head spill this came part the way up and then finally made our seven and a half percent i've gone for seven and a half percent there uh, 7.48 uh, and now we are saying is this your uh, right shoulder and is this break here of a move into tether reflective of a very serious set of circumstances for bitcoin because if we were to get up to this 8.2 run that target we would then be on a much bigger time frame looking at something a bit more worrying and yes i will be reviewing xrp yes i will be reviewing um, your, a number of the other core tokens that we've covered to some degree before but you have to understand bitcoin and to understand bitcoin you have to understand also the role that the stock market and the bond markets are bringing to risk generally risk generally how hungry are people for risk right now as the nasdaq enters an accelerating sell-off we will be discussing that as well so if you were to make that target it brings you to the green line side of an upside breakout that we've warned is ominous and could represent quite a disorderly spill in the crypto markets this could see bitcoin not only meet its previous lows in around the 15 and a half but there's even scope for it to run that low you could get a w bottom over there you could get a deeper dip that would be half that's fifteen thousand dollars that's what i would expect potentially if we're to pick up the better part of five percent on uh, tether 
that is not welcome. And of course, alts, higher beta, can fall further, can fall harder. We'll be dusting off some of those sole down to wherever it targets on the bear side. Um, so there could be a bit of a headache. Remember when you're turning early in a Bitcoin bull market, you can have some setbacks. So let's go to the Bitcoin chart before we go to those macro fundamentals that are also the bond markets. This cluster around the 1263, 1280s, on the overall expectation for tether if we were to break that remember it's a potential event on in the event that and it becomes far more likely if we run the 8.52 which becomes far more imminently possible if we get up to the 8.2s uh, and i wanted to highlight just before we leave this how stable we have been and how we squared up under this range for tether more recently having clambered up onto this level we have now since held it very very well big base there long period of steady accumulation and then again working up and now this base of support has come up underneath this and we are actually getting a 7.5 percent run ish right now so that's a concern the tether dominance is a concern because that will be a potential pattern implying remember patterns are leading indicators a potential pattern implying uh, in advance that there is a possibility sometimes even probabilities uh, that means you know higher likelihood of a certain event taking place uh, and those can't be ignored and that's the value of patterns they are leading so bitcoin let's talk about him and why he's been languishing and what's been worrying us about the degree that he's been languishing for all this time. Uh, let's go down to that one. Uh, and this is my concern. Since our uh, reversal break over here, uh, around the 24, 25,000, that's a little bit higher than that, 25,000, uh, we made great progress in the initial break. We pull back for a revisit that's totally within the realms of expectations. We reasserted to the upside. However, we made a marginally higher high. And since then, we've been throwing up shooting stars. That's a shooting star candle, that one. Um, minor hand, uh, hammer. And then again, rallies are being sold off. This shows sign of people de-risking what is deemed a high beta asset, crypto, Bitcoin. Don't forget the alts class are even higher uh, beta to even Bitcoin. Uh, so this is quite concerning. And actually, during this period, just to illustrate that point, Bitcoin dominance has actually been heading up. You can see that it's been making upside uh, progress, not in a way we really, really like, a bit of a broadening structure there for us on a bull pole, uh, but it's been making upside progress against the rest of the crypto market again generally bitcoin dominance to the, the only good instance is early doors bull market after a long bear you're good with having some dominance bitcoin runs first but if you're supposed to have turned generally you actually want to see bitcoin dominance shedding and some degree of the alts taking over this is not really transpiring in a way that is comforting uh, for us also, I want to bring in the stock markets here because we're going to be talking about this a bit more. But Bitcoin has been failing to really make serious headway against the likes of the NASDAQ. In actual fact, against the NASDAQ, your major first move, uh, the first cup gold nugget, should have performed already to a target. Uh, and this is the relevant valuation, relative, let me say, valuation of bitcoin against the nasdaq it's actually been in a bit of a funk it's not doing that great so actually had a good tech uh first half of the year and you've actually had a relatively unspectacular to the nasdaq performance from um, bitcoin this is all pointing to the potential for another deep or roll down possibly to the downside don't forget even next to the nasdaq bitcoin is considered even more risky so we go back to the log scale we reframe that you can see on this draw in the log scale which is my preferred choice uh, for the big time frames 
you are running out of steam. Yes, you came out of the lows of the um, the falling wedge. But since then, you've been battling to make progress. You've been battling to make progress. So what's going to happen? Are we going to spill back down? Is the structure going to break? Or are we going to see suddenly start seeing Bitcoin outperforming? Well, for Bitcoin to start outperforming, we would need some real serious fundamental events. And we suggested one that potentially you could get the ETF announcements. But outside of a gamble, which is a news related event, where I would expect the SEC to delay, delay and obfuscate as long as possible, even with BlackRock being the client, uh, requesting the investment. I think that comes maybe closer to 2024 to ignite the institutional in interest. I think that comes in the year of 2024. This doesn't look particularly positive and I could see that that basing ascending grind line could in fact be broken for a deeper dip down. In short, time frame wise, we feel that uh, this opportunity is all but run out of time. Uh, and that usually points to a great exit. Those were those boxes. You can learn more about that and how we utilize time frame analysis and why we expect targets to perform inside a certain time frame and why when they don't, it's usually a great time to be getting out uh, and that you usually get fall away. Another reason why I'm suggesting that Bitcoin is likely to be an underperformer for a bit and could be in a double dip. So we had a period where we had a good triggered inverted head and shoulder and it made great progress in the initial instance but then it started stalling 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 newer forces have come into play and that is why an opinion that is that could be the final low can become we could revisit that low or even make a new low again so that's why opinions change lack of strength relative weakness in an environment where other things were actually doing rather well and now those other things are tiring which are outside of the crypto market so now i need to take you to a different area of uh, markets let's just show you bitcoin against gold by the way gold which i will touch on a little bit here as well is getting hammered right now and this points to a similar counter anti-dollar um, hedge that is also not faring that well. It's also not faring that well. Now we have Bitcoin in a rising wedge after a pretty tough bear market against gold. A pretty tough bear market indeed. It's now in a rising wedge against gold. And I don't like that. Marginally higher highs, very, very weak progress. This is not a strong risk on. So in terms, again, of the beta and riskiness of an asset, gold is seen as safer by some way than Bitcoin. If you are going to get a break to the downside, which is the typical on balance of probabilities events that are likely to occur against the gold instrument, both will be going down Bitcoin more so. And right now we have gold going down. It's fallen below the $1,900 uh, area. So this is a little bit of a concern in terms of the gold, the relative gold uh, valuation and Bitcoin valuation for the crypto markets. And yes, they move together. And that's why you're having Bitcoin being a little bit soft at the same time. Plus, you've got that warning on the tether. So this is a precautionary video around the outlooks. Let's go to why is this happening? And to do that, I'm going to take you into traditional markets uh, such as, for example, let's start with the equities before we scare you with the bond markets. So what's been going on in the SPY? This is the Standard & Poor's 500 uh, equities. You may recall we had a head and shoulder here that made our downside target. Then you've had since the beginning of this year, roughly 23, you've had a pretty nice move up. You had a little bit of a dip down, but a pretty nice move up. Failed to reach new highs on the Standard and & Poor, and now you're looking a little leggy and tired and coming off. So after a sustained period of upside moves, so you've had three weeks in a row downside. We're in the tail end of the third week, and you don't tend to have strong Fridays, guys, especially in a soft, weary, risk-off moment. Of course, Michael Burry... Uh, adding to the fact that he put on a rather large short and many other people talking about the hypervaluations 
that exist in the tech market are not going to be helpful for risk on. If people start de-risking equity, it's like crypto never got to have its bull run because the equities are now turning and as a result, you missed that bus. So we are pretty much in that st uh, state right now. This is a uh, downturn that is looking a little bit disorderly. If you have a look at it on a daily level, you can see this is actually an acceleration. You opened, you tried to trade up, and then you smashed the open and are continuing further to the downside. Gaps are being closed uh, in terms of this, guys. Uh, and you can see, again, rising wedge structures into there. We have been very, very cautionary about this uh, bull market hypothesis. You failed to make the new highs. Our opinion has been that we are definitely in a recession and have been since we met the original criteria for a recession, not some hocus pocus recreated uh, for the narrative uh, new definition for the recession. And in fact, tax receipts and the debt markets are going to be probably the biggest problem. And you will finally start to see that being felt in the equity markets. Let's have a look at the IXIC. So here you are on the NASDAQ composite. This is all NASDAQ uh, equities. Again, this fella failed to make the new high. Uh, that was Hunter's call of a new bull market run from here. In fact, you made the head and shoulder target to the downside, which was why we uh, highlighted that was a dangerous call. And since then, you've had, since the beginning of the year on tech, you've had this bull run, um, uh, well, bull run, a rally, because you failed to make a new high here. Don't forget, this bear sell-off was vast, and you're still below that high. So the absolute low down here, well, they're putting too many things in the way, 37.46. Uh, and now you're back up a portion of that. So if we uh, measure the up leg from here, you're uh, up around 43%. Remember, that's off a lower number. To get back up to where you were, you would need a 61.89%. Uh, and now we're already turning over and selling off. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. You're also getting into, it has to be said, let's go back to the weekly so we can get more of the chart in there, the harder yards, the right shoulder. This uh, head and shoulder is essentially taken back. The original stock placement would be there. You made the target it has performed, so it's, it was a valid pattern, but you would be uh, passing one of the resistance points for the right, uh, right shoulder as you got here. This was sold off quite heavily, not once, but twice. You can see both in here and in there. So A, it's stickier ground. B, the environment is certainly changing. What environment am I talking about? The environment for debt and the role of money. The environment for debt and the role of money. Let's have a look at the US 30. Have we got it? The Dow. So we've looked at a number of indices for uh, the NASDAQ being probably the most important uh, risk proxy that's interesting for uh, crypto tech. Don't forget our friend Kathy Wood of ARK Investment. Um, we owe her a visit as well. Um, but this is turning down as well. This little structure that was very ascending. We drew that and said, well, you might make that, but this is a very ascending structure. You're getting a pullback now. So uh, it might be because you made the second interim or it could be deeper and the expectation for this to fail. So we don't like it when these lines underneath here are too steep. Uh, and we have, uh, I wouldn't be trading this particular structure that I've drawn, but we sketch all the time. So let's take it off so it doesn't confuse anybody, but that is in essence, where we would have expected it to stall at an interim and this is kind of the structure it's throwing out like that uh, not a point of purchase for me not a point of purchase and some concern so what is it about the debt markets that i keep threatening about it the problem is these markets these markets dear friends that we have continued to assert debt is the problem and you will be close to uh, a reset on debt potentially and that could be devastating to the banks it could be devastating to a number of things we've drawn these structures and we've been saying that the 30 year has a 4.748 in it 
uh, in our opinion, in terms of rates. What does that mean? That's what you pay. Rates are what you pay uh, to borrow money. And that's what happens when nobody wants to own your money anymore. The rates go up. Now, we saw that pullback, but you've gone a little bit further. The bonds are pushing higher, and that tends to, generally, unless you're getting an exact same magnitude or maybe even a bit more in the euro and the, the British pound and the other nations, that tends to also push the dollar. So it's fear. As rates get higher, the dollar gets higher. That makes the American market even more expensive than it is to foreign national buyers. It also makes the debt market more of a concern and the sustainability of the financial system with regards to paying the interest rates on that also a further concern. So with all these concerns, um, you find yourself in a position where we've got to, we've got to ask ourselves, is the stock market not going to have a bit of a puke and are rates not going to make this target and what kind of a stock market will we have if and when this has a pullback but churns but ends up trading through the 4.75 level uh, and by the way the 10-year which is another stalwart of the debt markets we have the footsteps all the way up to the five percent mark so why do we have that well technically we've shown you this chart before and i continue to be talking about traditional market things while we're talking about crypto so that people understand that you are now got crypto as a risk category of many assets in an asset management environment and the minute it's no longer about retail trader joe schmo and it's now about institutions and needing institutional support like blackrock you know the price setters of bitcoin are not you and i retail crypto are generally wrecked after this bear market after ftx after whatever hedge fund triple a capital whatever all of them retail are not making the price on this market the volumes are down on exchanges the absolute requirement is for institutional investment the sec are going to drag their heels they don't want you making the money and they want the institutions in when they're ready but first they want to maybe crash the banking system maybe clear people's bank accounts out maybe uh, enforce a little bit of impoverishment so that uh, you don't get in the way of the wall of institutional money that will come into possibly crypto when the SEC decides to take its foot off the brake. So we're squeezing higher on rates here. And if this continues, we could see a 5% uh, run occurring before some meaningful break and pullback. That's on a seminal 10 year yield. We showed you, or at least on Market Sniper, don't forget to subscribe on the Market Stripe, Sniper, Striper, Sniper. <laughs> sniper go and subscribe there uh, to ensure that you are kept up to date with everything ref gold more specifically in greater detail everything ref traditional markets in more detail than what i'm covering today bonds yields and everything else we covered also fundamentally how uh, corporate yields whenever they're super tight to uh, the fed fund rate it's normally a depression we covered the palladium chart that shows you when you are in a kind of a very bad uh, in market environment that has nearly always been a recession and all of these elements fundamentally are pointing to a severe recession stroke downturn expect the news to be negative expect the news to be negative uh, and to get worse before it gets better and also expect the fed that is the waterboard champions of the moment to keep holding people's heads under the water for longer because cause inflation because last time they were actively benign ne neglectful now they're going to be super vigilant and that means you don't get the relief you're seeking until they've properly cleared everybody out that's right a financial destruction so we were the original bear callers on long-term debt right way back here that's right we called this short i was just discussing it uh, again we called this short way back uh, in august that we were anticipating this structure to fall let's go back right the way all the way back go to go to 
this was a blow off period for what is we're looking at a debt a long term debt instrument called TLT it's an ETF uh, and that this was the events of March 2020 and that represented a turning a blow off turning event to debt valuations and by the time we had this big bloated convex uh, first impulse and second impulse here we were already set for what we expected to be a downside move for debt and we were already working on if that was a right shoulder where would the neckline be and we felt it would be 135 so we thought this would probably come down to 135 that's long-term debt value this is the valuation it is inverted to the yield the more the yield goes up the more the value goes down that's right this has transpired this ascending convex inverted HVF broke here at 163 traded all the way down to that neckline of 135 before giving its right shoulder rally since then it has broken from the 135 and now I will take you back up to that weekly chart because this is a big big follow all the way down to target and this is a weekly chart please understand this is deep you rallied up to this this has been resistance rising wedge you're letting go you will make new lows on TLT debt has to get devalued you cannot proliferate it at an ever exponential rate and expect something to be valuable as I said many times before like the grains of sand on the beach below me it cannot be valuable it is too much of it it's too easy to get it's too easy I can drop a bucket full of it on your doorstep every goddamn day won't cost me much apart from the exercise of the walk to the beach it is not scarce it is not rare and therefore it has no value that is where we are with debt this is the downturn in debt that is absolutely going to get worse and this is the beginning of your banking reset which makes your money in your bank even less safe uh, as well so what do you do what do you do you need to button down the hatches and expect another crisis as a result of rising interest rates potentially of a banking nature as well and all forms of new world order solutions coming away and during that period Bitcoin will not be pumping initially gold is not pumping at the moment uh, uh, I'm afraid to say I'd love to tell you that it is but it is actually selling off and in fact the oil price that went up to 85 is now back below the 80s um, we caution that energies is kind of you know it started to reflate a little bit as, as the bit as the market has continued to push but that it would uh, potentially come in for some trouble again you're at the top end of the range there's still the possibility of a big head and shoulder over here as well so we've got to watch out and the next demand destroying event isn't somewhere around the corner so this is quite a cautionary message um, from the macros that is outside your crypto confidence points if for those of you that are just crypto focused so let's have a look at that gold which is a much more stable by price behavior normally uh, than uh, crypto and this is what's happening I'm going to take the light off for now that is absolutely binning it you're on a th uh, three weeker you've run the previous low you've let go of 1900 you are in this part of a correction now I don't feel necessarily that we will have to go down that far at all uh, and I do feel the next break we make to the upside let me reiterate this because this does not nullify what we've said on gold will take us to the doorstep of the 2900 uh, mark and will be very bullish uh, for silver too however during this uh, third touch we are due a pullback and we have run that low so it's going to be a deeper pullback than we expect you could see the exhaustion coming in with all those wicks there across the top here wicks 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 driving and you can see why and you got the shooting star there on that candle and what's bad for gold unfortunately is not good necessarily for Bitcoin either God market of anti fiat the dollar is gold down gold up dollar bad for Bitcoin bad for crypto gold is not your enemy he's your friend he fights the same enemy as you uh, don't be jealous don't be competitive you're different you're digital he's old school 
It's all okay, but he is not doing great, and that is likely to lean on Bitcoin. It is likely to lean on Bitcoin. And in fact, the fact that Bitcoin didn't go so much in an environment where the Nasdaq was absolutely ripping shows that crypto is still not fully ready to be uh, apex bull. So it's still in its recovery state uh, in terms of overall markets, and it's now going to be facing headwinds for a while. How far could it go off? I don't know. I don't know and I wouldn't like to say we have no downside targets. We still have an upside inverted head and shoulders on Bitcoin, but there is real risk that it could get tested. You could A, revisit that neckline. Let's go back to the Bitcoin chart. You could B, uh, revisit the uh, right shoulder low, which could inv uh, invalidate the head and shoulder. And C, you could make new lows. Depending on how big the crisis would be, we will get our answer. So the gold-silver ratio, like the debt markets, is one of our core benchmarks that we're watching. So we predicted a move up here, and that is what's happened so far. But the question is, does it stop and turn down? That's the best news for gold, for silver, and for Bitcoin, if it were to do that. Or does it continue in its current direction? If it takes out that high and continues in its current direction, we may have a longer, more serious problem on our hands, and it will also involve the economy, the stock market, the debt markets, and all other things. So that is where we're at. Dollar could be strong, but beware. The banking system could be weak within that. So there you have it. Da -da -da -da. What happens next on the gold-silver ratio, funny enough, has bearing on crypto. So we head our way back uh, to uh, Bitcoin. Now, some guys will be asking, but, but, but you said, but, but, but you said XRP to the moon. Uh, but, but, but you said. So 2024, uh, we do expect nothing has changed on our forecast for XRP uh, in terms of its strength or for that matter, Lumen and, the, and our mystery token. However, the timing for when it happens does potentially get extended. If you don't make consistent progress, you can have a pullback and there must be a reason. Why are you underperforming other asset classes? And then why, when those asset classes run out of breath, you will wear the elevator down move with them. So at what point is the reversal uh, of the head and shoulders invalidated? Around the 199 point. So that was your head and shoulder that we've spoken of enough times. Um, this marginally higher high is what's concerned. So for me, the people have to realize you are staring at the possibility of this rising wedge over here, and that could be an unfriendly sell. Now, I'd love to say you'd just revisit the neckline and then we would recover. Um, it depends on the Chief Satan Federal Reserve in terms of how far they will go to promise new largesse. I'd love to say that that stays intact and is not run. But it could get run depending on the scale of the crisis. I would love to say you would just make a W bottom like that for the down leg to 15,000 so that we could end up with a big fat orange W like that. And then we will be waiting for the next visit here and then we'll be trading long for those 42 and a half targets etc that come but that would involve an invalidation of the head and shoulder and a new pattern being drawn so patterns in our realm always have remember to book a call time frames associated by which they should be uh, performing as well as stops and targets that is how we manage patterns if your trade educator or friend or people do not have invalidation by time as well as by price then you can be left holding a bag for a very, very long time while other opportunities are shooting, sinking, spiking, jumping and shorting uh, are all lost on an open-ended basis. Do not be caught in a time warp giving up uh, and paying, or especially if you're using leverage and paying carry cost, uh, only to realize that you're in the wrong place. You should have, with all trades, a time stop for them, especially those which involve leverage uh, but even for investments, you should have a time frame um, in terms of when you expect certain things to have done what. Okay, what else have we got for you here? 
Um, so let's look at the XRP and the others because people will be watching and they'll be saying, but you said $16 and X amount of cents. Yes, and in fact, potentially more and none of that has changed. But thankfully for getting defensive, we are not wearing this downside to the same degree. But this overall structure still is absolutely good. But what do we need? We need we need a run up to around 111 for our chosen third impulse. So that is your first, that is your second. And this is all part of the complexity of ups and downs uh, that need to happen potentially before we can have our final structure ready in place. And I would suggest, I don't think it's going to happen necessarily this year. Um, I think it's more likely to be 20, 24 and 2025 uh, in terms of all of these items. So let's have a peek uh, again at that. So you've gone up, you had a beautiful little fractal. This was a beautiful little fractal. But it's only a small trade inside of this much bigger structure that still requires us to get both up and down to an acceptable level, up and down. So we could go down now and then go up again. I think we need a 110, 111 at least. And this can all extend into the following year before it's finished. So for those of you holding XRP, providing you prepared to hold for an extended period that could take you to the event only triggering, that doesn't mean target making, that means just getting to the point where it's ready to start throughout 2024 and then when you allow for triggering and maybe performance time into 2025 you're welcome to huddle on you're welcome to huddle on there is no guarantee though that you don't return to the 46 especially in an environment where you're getting a demand destroying event that we've referred to before that we caution could actually hurt the en en um, energies market there is quite a hard floor you will be relieved to know at 32 um, yes, you've had some hammer wicks there. And that's come up from a previous hard floor at about 18. So you have made key levels that I would expect not to be run um, and would be a real problem for our hypothesis. A running of the 32 below these uh, hammer lows, that's maybe at 31.0 or whatever, that would worry me uh, and would be an, a potential beginning of invalidation. And the final and full invalidation, of course, would be sub the 13 there as per that low. So that means this is not going to do the upside shoot. We all thought it would do and be your new world order token. This is topped out and is coming down. Um, not very likely, but there's still time that has to be absorbed before we are ready. And that's going to require a 110 run. And right now, crypto ain't ready to be properly bullish. In the environment where the equity markets was going up and there was a very strong risk on environment, the, the crypto markets have underperformed. In fact, certain big name alts are quite close to uh, big lows. You look at Algo and various others, uh, they're quite close to lows. Litecoin, Bitcoin sibling, actually uh, is turning over and puking after a run up there quite badly in this environment and looks like it could take out localized lows there and maybe there with further downside. So this also has not been a particularly famous performance. This has been a bit of a broadening structure after a long lengthy bear market with a real nasty skid that associated the FTX and the terrible news and so far so fairly unimpressive. So this is basing price behavior and you could sell off to a level here, come back up and then be in a bullish W bottom environment. But that's not going to feel very good running down to 49 let's say. Uh, it's a possibility. It's not a call. There's no pattern for it. The same going for Lumen. We had an amazing little spurt with the XRP story, but it is puking up a little bit. Not as bad. Uh, again, it will take something pretty ugly to get it back down at the seven cents levels and the seven and a half cents levels. But um, 
and it has slightly overperformed the rest of the alt. So if you have a look at the XL on DOM at uh, Spurt and the, its positioning as probably a status vehicle um, of choice. Let's just get that to rescale for some or other reason it doesn't want to do it. So you can see that it has added some dominance relative to the other alts, but um, it also hits into key area of general resistance from the wicks all the way across here and it's also having a bit of a down there. Could it just be uh, a right shoulder and return up here? Absolutely. It could take time and that could happen too. So long run, still 24, 25 good for uh, Lumen and I would Im imagine Ripple as well, possibly before um, you can check those out. If you have a look at something like HBAR, for example, this is still early doors bottoming uh, type behavior and it had a recent run. Look at that. It's given back most of that after falling in here. This is how close it is to its legacy low. There's the low. There's a secondary low very close to that one. This is a long way off anywhere near the bull market it once had. It's a long way off and it's softening as we speak. So it's quite clear. You've got to look at the overall market position and you've got to look at Bitcoin with a bit of a cynical idea, a uh, cynical eye, a jaundiced eye, should I say. Uh, it's not doing what it should be doing. It is not gaining value in a risk on environment, but it is under pressure in a risk off one. Um, that said, if you are to hold any token, the one that will fall the least in these times is probably Bitcoin. Is probably by, uh, but I would rather hold the um, tether. What about the Ethereum? Let's talk about Ethereum. A quick run through on Ethereum. Um, very low vol. Also, we've highlighted this before. The risk of the real risk of a rising wage structure that is needing of a bit of relief on this line over here that we've drawn for you. Uh, in orange but should be in pink there you go uh, and the potential for a rising wedge structure here again low volatility sometimes can be bullish sometimes can be bullish but i wouldn't want to see this break through this level because then you could be in for a journey it could take you back down to the 1000s range before you get some recovery and this could be a much longer basing period many people forget that the last bull market actually had a fake rally period for Bitcoin in it. Uh, that was the 14K run of July. Let me just remind people of that. So that was 2017 and 18 highs. That was when Bitcoin ran to 14,000, uh, just sub 14,000. You can see that for Ethereum, a real technical point was there. When Bitcoin ran 14,000, it didn't really have the big bull market. That was, of course, the events of CV19. And then, of course, when you broke, you revisited and that gave you a W bottom uh, and would have generated a W bottom target uh, in around there. So it's quite possible to have another leg to basing out just as this was a second leg sell off just when everyone was that's the bottom it's all done yes it was the bottom in this case but you weren't all done because you went up and you came a substantial way back down again before you finally went up and this could be the problem we have here you could have another down leg in you before you finally go up uh, and that's what I'm worrying. And this is the demand destroying event that I'm referring to. Take a look at some of the other uh, alts. Let's just have a look at some of the other alts on the crypto market cap. Say, for example, Solana or ADA. A lot of ADA fans. Let's maybe look at ADA and just show you how it's not really come alive for ADA. So that was the bear lows quite recently. This was the bear lows. Look at this as a market structure, guys. 
And by the way, also look at it. This was the Bitcoin low and then the Bitcoin to 2014 high. Uh, my apologies, 2014 high, the 14K, just up to the 14K high. You dipped lower where Ethereum didn't dip as low. You dipped lower on ADA. Can you see that? That was a much lower dip second time. That is a new low for your favorite alt. A new low that ran the previous low. That extends your bear market to this point. And the rest, even for Ethereum, was bottoming. It wasn't upside. It was upside, downside, upside, downside. Hard. There was no dominant trend. Let's be honest. Most retail is just waiting for this key moment. And that is about that much time of the total life of the token that it spends. And then you had one here into the run-up of 2017. So every three years, you're all praying for that one six-week period, that one eight-week period where you just get the moonshot. Let's be frank, that's just a little bit of top-up. So, of course, at 69, uh, ADA made a higher high while Bitcoin didn't, but that was already warning, broadening structure, down you are to go. And boy, did you go down. And many people didn't believe me that you would see such lows again on ADA. And that crash low is actually another instance where ADA made a lower low than what, what everyone else thought the bottom. This is Bitcoin 15 and a half K. And this is more recently. And I'm afraid to say the recovery since hasn't been great. But this can still turn out into a basing. It's a marginally lower low. You could come off a little bit. You might go one little bit lower or meet the same. And eventually this can all turn into a basing low. It's just not this stage you're waiting for yet. Bull market. This is what everybody thinks of is the bull market between these two X's. While in actual fact you spend a long time in swings, both up and down, in what is a lengthy basing period between a bear market down to there, which actually had an extended leg to there. So that was all part of the bear market. All of that was part of the bear market for ADA. Then you've had a half bull pull back. And then you've had the second real money making bull. If you were in early, most people are not in early here. So they only really get engaged for that period over there. And if we compare where we are today, this is your bear market and you've actually had a second leg low. You could even have another that could take you lower. You could have. That doesn't mean you have to have. You could go higher. You could start flattening out. And who knows? We could get all amazing save the crypto market ETF news coming out. Uh, but a single news item, that is gambling, friends. The chart is showing me that the footprints in the sand are not strong. And that is not a small token. That is a token that is well-loved, well-supported, has some real dev work going on behind it, and is in the top 10, sitting at number 8. Sitting at number 8. We can look at Dogi or uh, Solana, if you like, uh, but I don't think the story changes that much. The bull market has not fully arrived for most of these tokens. Way here he comes. You see, I think that's the Elon factor. When I went to Tesla, out came the spliff smoker in a similar fashion. I'm glad I got him on camera. At least people will believe that that's what goes down. Um, so this is a potential bottoming, but it could also be a ledge before a sell off. Boom. We've drawn this fella before. Could it be a head and shoulder and a real route? What's behind Doge? God only knows. When Elon a while back said, uh, I've been speaking to the developers. I don't know if it's one man and his dog. Uh, and we're meant to take it seriously. But we've drawn this head and shoulder before. And that would be to a nothing value. A really low nothing value, guys. Um, if it were to happen. That's not a call, though. It doesn't have to happen. You could just make, uh, you know, this descending triangle could carry on a while longer. And eventually you could break to the upside. You could churn and squeeze. You could make a little bit of a lower low. A lot of things could happen. Um, but it's not clear that the bull has begun. This is a potential bottoming. 
and it also potential scope for a new low. So clarity is low on that one. That's a top 10 token. Solana was the other. Solana was the other. So while we pull up Sol, USDT, we'll go with Binance on the crypto. We'll wipe our face clean and we will say, take me to your leader. There you go. Actually been a tad better, but it properly puked there. We highlighted again that this is head and shoulder stuff. This is a return to neckline esque. But if we had a terrible fall and a terrible drama and bank failure, which is quite possible with the interest rate environment, good luck. Good luck. This could fall brutally uh, to the downside. And we had at one point warned that you could trade a long time ago into the three dollars for Solana that hasn't gone away it hasn't gone away entirely until you run that right shoulder over there that's an invalidation point forty seven dollars you're not there yet look it's going to take one hell of a crisis but wasn't the events of March 2020 uh, one hell of a crisis do we do small crises anymore if everybody loses their money uh, in a bank the global blank bailout uh i think we're in all sorts of problems we're in all sorts of problems so that can spill there and go down a little more can come down to just this level and do a double bottom so there's lots of possibilities that can occur i'm afraid to say it's not a very clear time but what i can tell you is that the macro environment for debt is very poor interest rates down debt to make new lows tlt chart that i show you and you can see more of that on the market sniper channel that is bad because that hits banks it hits consumers it hits corporations it hits everything then you have the belligerent uh, sec that's not going to give any great clarity and any great rush so you don't want to be just swinging in the wind eating red on a token hoping that an etf gets uh, approved the price behavior, knowing the insider cheats, is not showing me that there is in imminent uh, approval for a Bitcoin ETF right now. It's very low vol, but it doesn't look that strong or supportive. And in actual fact, this overall price behavior from here is a bit rounded out. And I would be a bit concerned that down legs are more likely to be the order of the day so you have a rounding out top you also can draw it as a rising wedge we have poor price behavior here don't be a bag holder uh, and get caught to the downside and remember we will get our opportunities on xrp and xlm in due course in my opinion on balance of probabilities but only after all the macroeconomic events have played out and have done their bit remember the proliferation that follows a crash is the thing that will pump the uh, markets later as it did for bitcoin in the post covid recovery look at that 4k 64k they pumped bitcoin sixty four thousand dollars my uh, sixty thousand dollars for you with that six or seven trillion they created um in splurge money and a lot of it found it in both found its way both to the stock market and to the crypto market okay so overall a caution the tether dominance uh, is a caution it points to two separate patterns on a smaller time frame and a larger time frame we mentioned it last time um i'm less and less you should see evidence if the if there was about to be a btc they are just so dishonest they're such insider traders you would see evidence that there was about to be major positive news i i feel uh in the broad sense but could be wrong you could just out of the blue get a green candle out there and then i'm the one who's taking you out of the market scaring you but it isn't an environment where they are encouraging risk and the fed is coming out really hawkish okay Thanks for watching. Remember, click below. Not only is it important that you make money and there are opportunities and we have got some setups for people to make money, both to the upside and the downside in our community on crypto and 
on uh, traditional markets. It's very important you don't lose money when everyone else is losing money. This could be one of those events. Sometimes doing nothing is better than doing a bad trade, uh, especially without money management and so tying yourself up investment wise and just watching everything wash away. Um, there will be shorts. There will be real opportunities to build wealth when everyone else is actually getting theirs crushed. To do that, you need method, you need patience, you need patterns with on balance of probability outcomes, tight stocks that can be activated with managed losses and highly expansive gains to the uh, upside or downside that are cashing in for you in your name. If that means something to you and you want to build wealth in reset times, let me tell you, this is the reset times, not when is reset, you're living it right now. There is no one single moment. It is a series of events in parallel running crypto with traditional markets, bank failures. You've had them all already before, starting way back from subprime, even dot com. This is the beginning of the end of the traditional system. You need to buy yourself as much freedom as possible. I will be buying the carbon credits to travel from all the peasants that have no money. Because there will be a system to do that. So there's always a hierarchy, even in slavedom. And we are going to chuckle our way into building good quality of life and wealth throughout this period. If that resonates with you, uh, click the first link below in the description book of course. Till next time, I'll catch you later. A cautionary tale on crypto. A cautionary tale on crypto. There could be some real cooling coming on. Risk off for that demand destroying event is high. Till next time, I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. We appreciate likes and shares. Bye for now.